Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to a tutorial on how to quickly assign your textures into your 3D model from Substance. I just found out about this plugin and I'm excited to show you how fast and how easy it is to plug in the textures that Substance Painter provides for you. So in a previous tutorial, we've UV mapped this tool, which you can download for free at academicphoenixplus.com. And it's already UV mapped and I also textured it in Substance. So that's another video tutorial you guys can check out. However, in this one, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to quickly assign the texture. So usually what we do is assign us uh, an Arnold Substance Painter and attach all the textures one individually at a time. But Maya actually has now provided a Substance plugin that will automatically do this for you. And it's really neat. So the first thing you need to make sure is that you have your Substance texture. So this is my stool model. I exported my textures under source images in a folder called Substance. And it's got a base color, a height, a normal map, and a roughness map. This TX files, in case you guys are not aware, is when Arnold renders it, it produces this TX file. All right, so you'll notice that I have a bunch of tabs up here to the top in Maya, and one of them is called Substance. If you guys don't have this, do not worry. I'm going to show you how to get that. This is using Maya 2022 under Windows Settings and Preferences. I'm going to go to Plugin Manager. And these are all the plugins that Maya can provide for you. You can turn them all on if you want to. I'm not, I'm just going to look for substance. Just type it in up there and then just make sure all of these are turned on. It's pretty nice. This is also the place where you can find your OBJs. So if you need to find an OBJ export, it's right here as well. I don't know why I felt like telling you that, but there you go. More information for you. All right, so that should automatically pop in this Substance tab, and we're gonna click on this button right here, which is Apply Workflow to Maps. Click on that. It's gonna give you this fancy little window. Uh, I'm choosing Arnold. There's a couple of other options, which is nice, but I'm choosing Arnold. And then it's gonna ask me to select multiple maps, which I will. And notice that since I set my project, it's good to go. I'm going to go to source images. I'm going to go to substance and then select their base color. I'm holding down control to select the height, the normal and the roughness. Click select and it will automatically attach them into these folders. I don't really have metallic. I don't have an ambient occlusion baked out or I don't have emission. So there you go. Click apply. And that doesn't look like much happened, but let's press the number six on our keyboard. And what it did is that it created a new shader and I'm going to open up the hypershade so you can see called a AI standard surface. So let's go ahead and select this object, right click, assign existing material and choose AI standard surface. I press the number six so you can see that the texture is there and I'm also going to turn off the wireframe. Now this model is a little bit older, so that's why it looks so dark. Um, you shouldn't have this problem if you have a newer model. But just in case, let's go ahead and change this. So I'm going to open up my, my preferences. So Windows Settings and Preferences, or you can also click on this little uh, animation control right here, which is a little orange man running with a gear on his back. And what we're going to choose is color management and turn that on. And now we have a much nicer looking, easier to see model. It's a lot brighter. So let's see what happened. Let's take a look at this Arnold AI standard surface. I'm going to scroll up. You can see that the color is plugged in and all the weight and the weight is set to one. So the base color is plugged in correctly. And if I take a look at it, it does have a multiply node. And then we can also see the texture is here. Perfect. We can go back and take a look at the roughness. We have a roughness, we click here. We can see that it is raw. And if you open this up, you'll notice that alpha is luminous is on. Perfect, that's exactly what we want. I keep scrolling down. Under geometry, we have a bump map, click on this. You'll notice that alpha luminance is also on, normal map is attached, and we have a raw file. Perfect. I'm going to click on back one so we can see the pump tuning node. And you'll notice that the use as is tangent space normal, which is correct. But you'll notice that the Arnold is actually not flipped. That's the only thing that I'm surprised that they don't do. So I just want to compare the difference between what it looks like when the flip bar is active. Usually you want to turn that off, but let's make a comparison right now. So visually, it looks pretty good. I'm going to get an Arnold light physical sky and I'm going to grab the sky and just increase the intensity by 1.5, something like that. And let's render and see what that looks like. So I'm going to go to the top, Arnold render. 
Okay, the shadow is kind of facing the camera, so I'm going to kind of rotate this angle here so I can see a bit more of the specularity map. And because I like HD, I'm going to go down to, I'm going to go to my render settings and then choose HD 720 so I can really see those nice details. Let's turn the resolution gate so I know exactly what I'm looking at. And let's take a look. Press stop. You can see that here's the butt maps or the normal maps working. You can see a little bit of that change. I'm going to go ahead and take a screenshot just so we can compare it. And let's see what happens when we change this into flip the R. So again, I'm going to go to butt map, click on that connection, click on this one, which takes you back up to the bump 2D node and then flip the R. And let's take a look. So as you can see, and it helps if I flip back and forth, that the, when I flip the R, you'll notice that the areas that are scratched and there's um, wear and tear, it's actually deeper. And the normal map looks a lot stronger. So it's really up to you which one you want. I personally always flip the, I uh, turn off the R just so I can get a much stronger detail. Now, some of you may have noticed that there's this interesting dark areas around the edges of our model. Um, you can make them go away, but just pressing the number three, which will give you a smooth preview. So let me select everything but the floor, press the number three. And I mean, if I select the floor, it just makes it rounded too. So it's just a smooth preview. And it's always nice to see what this model looks like with a smooth preview. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that uh, snapshot and I'll be right back to see how this model looks like in uh, smooth. Look how nice that looks. There's no weird thing in the background on the edges. Really nice. Cool, let's take a snapshot. All right, so we've talked about color, roughness, and normal. Well, what happened to the height, right? We do have a height map, where did it go? Well, it is known as a displacement map. So where do we find that? It's easier to visualize it if you go to the hypershade and you can, you can see that we have a displacement map here, but if I select the AI standard surface, which I should relabel as stool shader to keep things organized. If I select that stool shader and click on this little guy right here, which is basically going to graph the network, you can also right click on the shader and just click on graph network. And it will tell you how everything is connected. This is my shader. You can see that it's connected to the bump 2D node which is connected to the normal map. And they all share the same placement node, which I think is very smart of the, uh, of the material because any type of changes I made to this placement node will affect everything, which is actually phenomenal. Uh, you'll see that the roughness is connected to the specular roughness. Um, you can see that the base color is connected to a multiply node. And I guess that gives you a little bit more control over your textures. So that being said, where's the displacement map? Well, it's right here. You have to click on this uh, SG node, which they changed it to set one. And there is a displacement material right here and there is a connection, pink. And if I click on that, it will open up file, the file that has the height map on it. So it actually runs through the displacement map. Now it doesn't have much of an effect, but just things to note is that it does turn on alpha is luminance and also the alpha offset is set to negative 0.5. So that's something to just kind of think about when you guys are creating, attaching your map. So what happens if I change this into, let's say a zero? Well, let's find out. Gonna, I'll be right back. Press stop. And it actually blows it up a little bit. So this is the displacement map with a zero. And this is the one that actually looks like it's kind of like turned into a balloon. So welcome to displacement maps. All right, let me change that back into negative 0.5. Um, displacement maps are really great. So I definitely would encourage you guys to uh, explore more and I can do a tutorial. Actually, if you guys want a tutorial displacement map, just let me know in the comments below. I can go over it, it's actually kind of neat. Uh, but the point is, is that uh, the height map is attached to the displacement map. So when you export something from Substance that has something that manipulates the silhouette, then the displacement map will give you that silhouette. All right, cool. So that is basically how you attach using this fancy new Substance Painter plugin, how to quickly create a shader and then assign it to the model.
Hopefully you guys found that helpful. Let me know by leaving a comment below. I definitely feel that this will increase my productivity on my pipeline uh, just by assigning textures because it takes such a long, it doesn't take that long, but you know, attaching every single texture can take a while, uh, but this is definitely fast and awesome. Well, hopefully you guys found that helpful. Let me know by leaving a comment below. If you like this video, make sure to click that little thumbs up to like it. And if you feel like this video would help others, please, please click share. It would be amazing if my videos can help other artists just like you. If you want to follow along, feel free to download the free 3D model at academicphoenixplus.com. You can actually download this stool model and other models for free. So feel free to download it so you can learn how to not only UV map it, texture it, and then bring it into Maya for a render. Again, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Keep creating and I will see you next time.